Hello, welcome to our Omeka.net tutorial, created for LIS 488, Technology for Information Professionals. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to publish a digital collection online using Omeka.net. Omeka is an open source web publishing platform for archives, libraries, and museums. It's a tool to share digital collections and combines text, media, and metadata to create online exhibits. Compared to other content managing and publishing systems like DSpace or Fedora, Omeka is relatively lightweight and can be managed through an internet browser. Optional plugins increase its capabilities and are able to meet the needs of a variety of exhibitions. These features make it a great choice for smaller libraries, archives, and museums to display their collections online in a way that's both accessible and media rich. With patience, experience, and the right tools, institutions have created digital exhibits that look like this. There are a few versions of Omeka. Classic Omeka, which is for individual projects, Omeka S, which allows resources to connect across institutions, and Omeka.net, which is hosted. We'll be talking about Omeka.net since it takes care of the hosting process for you, but the basics we'll discuss here are mostly applicable to all versions. Before getting started with Omeka, you'll need a few things. A computer with internet access, an email address, and digital representations of the items you'd like to display, such as, but not limited to, photos of art, document scans, geotagged locations, audio files, or video files. Let's walk through how to create a site. First, you'll need an Omeka account. On your computer, navigate to omeka.net slash sign up. Input your information to create a free account. The free version of Omeka allows you to create one free site, albeit with a few limitations, only 500 megabytes of storage, limited plugins, and only two CSS themes. Once that's set up, log in using your username and password. You'll be presented with the blank canvas of an empty Omeka site. Let's give it a name. For our demonstration, we chose to theme our site around rubber ducks and other duck-related materials. So let's name this site Plastic Birds Test. Now we can start populating it with items in our collection. These can be just about anything. Photographs, dulcimers, buildings, or songs. Next, we'll be walking through how to make a collection and populate it with items. We'll start by creating a collection. The collection will act as the container for the items you'll eventually create and add to it. Let's add some information to our collection. We'll name it Rubber Ducks. Great, now we have our first collection. Let's make an item to put in it. Navigate to the items page and click add an item. Today, we want to add a cool sci-fi rubber duck to our site. Under files is where you can upload an image of your item. With the add another file button, I'm going to upload the file img underscore 9349 from my desktop. It might take a minute for the image to show up on your screen, but when I hit the green add item button, it will save. Now, let's add some metadata to our item. Omeka uses Dublin Core Standards as its default metadata vocabulary. In order to add information about our items, we're going to add text in the boxes below the content fields. Add information to your item by assigning it a title and any other relevant information, such as the creator, format, subject, and so forth. With Dublin Core, each field has a specific meaning. The first one we want to input is title, or the name of a resource. In this case, our item is acting as our resource, so I'm going to put down Dr. Squawk. Next, I'm going to scroll down to Creator. The creator field is the same as your author or maker field and should include all the names primarily responsible for the creation of your item. I'm going to put National Broadcasting Corporation here. Next, we'll scroll down to the date field. It's worth noting here that Dublin Core is flexible with what it means by date. We could put the date of creation, date of availability, or the date of the revision. In this case, we're going to put 1988, the year this Dr. Squawk Duck was manufactured. After date, I want to add data to the format section. 
In Dublin Core, format is the physical medium, file format, or dimensions of our item. Since we're using a physical object as our item, I'm going to put plastic sculpture, its physical medium. If I were inputting the data for something like a Picasso painting, I would probably be putting oil on canvas. If I was inputting data for a digital object, I might put 24-bit wave file or optical disk image. Finally, I'm going to go down to identifier, which is the unique number assigned to the item. Since our collection is small and uses a linear identifying system, I'm going to put 2024.5. I'm not going to do this right now, but if I wanted to add a location important to my item, like where it was created or where it might reference, I would add that under coverage. If I wanted to describe my object textually, I would add it under description. For more information on what Dublin Core terms mean and how to use them, you can visit dublincore.org, where the standards for the format are published. Now that we've input our item type information, let's move on. At the top, switch to Item Metadata. Here, you will assign your item a type, such as a physical object, image, website, etc. I'm going to select Physical Item. Under the Tags section of your item, you can identify your item with subject-related tags that you create. These will help visitors to your site sift through information based on what they want to see. For our item, I'm going to add Novelty Toy, Rubber Duck, Science Fiction, and Space, making sure to separate each with a comma. If they're not comma-separated, Omeka will consider them all to be one long tag. We can also designate items as Private or Public. This determines if an item is displayed on the website. Keeping things private can be helpful while a site is being built, or if there's an item with copyright concerns. Dr. Squawk will be a public item, so he'll be visible on our web page. Then, on the right-hand side, under Collection, you can place your item into the Rubber Ducks collection we created earlier, so that it has a home. Now, your Omeka site has its first collection and its first item. Now let's take a look at what we've created. You may also be interested in adding some design elements to your site. You can do this by going to Appearance in the top right. The free version of Omeka allows you to use two CSS-powered themes, Seasons and Berlin, and restricts your customization options. But you're still able to do a few things, like add a header or logo image and create text for your homepage. You can also adjust the navigation and certain settings. Now, let's take a look at an example of a more fleshed out Omeka site. Here's a site we created and populated with objects related to plastic birds, specifically a collection of rubber ducks. This is what the front end or public facing side looks like. This is our homepage with a header and some text and previews of our items and collections. If we go into the collections, you'll see there's two distinct collections. Let's click into rubber ducks. We get information about the collection, its creator, its copyright, and as we scroll more, we see the associated items. Let's click into one. This item has photos, metadata, and tags. If I click on one of those tags, you'll see a list of all the other items also with that tag. Now let's see what this looks like from the back end, or the private admin view. Like before, we can see and manage our collections and items, but you see what it looks like with more material. Omeka is a valuable tool for us as information professionals because it allows us to share our institutional or personal collections online and to a larger public audience. Digital exhibits allow users to move through material at their own pace and learning style while still being able to interact, albeit remotely, with collections. With both free and paid versions, it's available for curators of exhibits both small and large. Omeka's simple user interface allows large collections to be maintained online by a single librarian.
While Omeka can seem overwhelming at first, with practice and time, it will feel much more manageable. We hope that this tutorial can help you get started on your Omeka journey. To continue your Omeka studies, here are some more resources to explore. First, digging into existing Omeka-powered sites is a helpful way to get a feel for the software. The showcase page on Omeka.net's homepage has a few great examples. Second, plugins are available to extend Omeka's functionality, adding things like admin tools, expanding search capabilities, providing a batch uploader for many files, which is something that would have been helpful for us, allowing commenting, and much more. Vin University in Hanoi has an extensive Omeka tutorial on their webpage that outlines some technical uses for the software. Another group of resources we found useful were scholarly articles outlining how different institutions use Omeka. Using Omeka to build digital collections, the Metro Case Study, is an article from DLib Magazine that outlines how New York City libraries can build and maintain unique digital collections online. In 2022, Information Technologies and Libraries published an article called A Omeka S Repository for Place and Land-Based Teaching and Learning that explores the development of a cross-institutional, land-based, multidisciplinary way to share and store curriculums and materials to engage students with the Salish Sea bioregion. This article highlighted how versatile the Omeka framework is. An item can even be a curriculum or lesson plan.